Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I'm Sayaka and in this video I'm going to test this drink as my mom bought from Japan years ago but never actually tried out. This is a special edition with the orange box in the face of Sega's present on it, but now without further ado, let's see if it works right away. And on the inside I have the Dream Passport, which offers some basic internet features to the user. And then there are some manuals, which I have to say they look pretty much new. And then finally the console itself. But I think there is a problem with the open button. Definitely I'll have to open it before testing it. And over here there are some cables and also the controller. Let's see. Well, unfortunately this time I don't have the VMU, which is the little screen that you can insert over here. And in some games it can offer some additional information. For example, I remember that in Fur Fighter you could see the life of the puppies that you were rescuing. But for now, before testing the Dreamcast, I also want to open it to remove the power button mechanism. It could be a screw or a spring, I don't remember, but either way it can make contact, so just to be safe, I'm going to open it before testing it. Luckily there are just four screws here on the back. As always, I want to remind you that my videos are based on my personal experience and should not be interpreted as tutorials. Certain repair procedures involve handling internal power supply components, including capacitors that might retain an electric charge. Do not attempt to replicate my actions without the guidance of an expert. And the spring was just on the side here, so let's see right away if it works. And now let's see if it works. Obviously this is a Japanese console and I have to use a step-down converter to use it. Mine goes down to 100 volts and I have to say that aside from the open button problem and this thing right over here, it looks brand new. It's not even a bit yellow. It looks like someone just bought it. So let's try to see if it works. It powers on and the LED is orange so that's a good sign but nothing happens let's try turning it off and on again but nothing happens I don't even have a black screen there is no signal whatsoever so maybe I'll just try to check the voltage in the power supply area. Alright, let's see if the issue is related to the power supply. This point should have 12 volts and it's showing 13 volts which is a bit high but still within range. In these three pins should read 0 volts since they're ground and they're all fine here it should be 5 volts and it's reading 5.1 and this one should be 3.3 which is also correct. Well I don't see any damaged capacitors or obvious problems so I might just try swapping the video cable with one I know for sure it works. I swapped in the video and the power supply cable from another Dreamcast I know works and now let's see what happens. Maybe it will make a difference, maybe not, but in this way I can isolate the issue just to the console itself. And maybe I should turn on the step down. And it works! So I guess the issue was just related to the video cable. Let's try a disc. I'll use the one I found in the box. And I have to be honest, I've never played much with the Dreamcast. I remember playing with Fur Fighter when I was very little, but nothing more. I'll also try to see if the controller works. It looks like it's working because the disc is also spinning. But nothing happens, so 
Maybe I'll just try cleaning the laser a little bit since it was a bit dusty. I've cleaned the laser but it wasn't actually that dusty. You can see that when I hold this sensor over here I still have the same problem because the disc is spinning but nothing happens and after a while the disc will stop. So at this point I think I'll just check the potentiometer of the laser. While I was removing the optical drive, I noticed that the model shown on the console doesn't match the one on the box. Probably the seller just wanted to sell a working console with a box, so they took the console that was originally in this box and they left a non-working one. And also, I think that someone already tried to fix this laser since this piece of plastic broke a little bit. So let's have a look at the potentiometer. It should be around 1000 ohms and it shows 1200 ohms which is a bit high so I'll try to lower it a bit down to around 1000 ohms. I've adjusted the potentiometers since the value was a bit too high but now since I removed the optical drive I also want to take a closer look at this board since I've seen many repairs which include a recap of this area so just to be safe I also want to check the capacitors. I'm removing everything so I also have the chance to give the case a proper cleanup and to unplug the power switch from the power board I need to remove the two screws over here the power board connects to the motherboard through a 6-pin port on the end closest to the controller port so I need to grip the board at this corner and gently pull it out. Of course, first I have to remove two screws here on the board. For the controller port I'll pull out this ribbon cable and then I have to remove four screws and of course unplug the fan. And now finally the GDRAM which is actually pretty easy to remove. I just need to take out three screws and then I can have access to the board. A few moments later. Finally, I was able to have a close look at the board with the microscope and as you can see, I think that the issue is pretty evident. This capacitor needs to be replaced and I don't know if you can see it, but it's very swollen. And also this area is covered in corrosion, especially this resistor. So what I'll do now is to remove this capacitor and this resistor, check the traces underneath because they might be damaged and then I'll replace this capacitor and this resistor. But before that, I also want to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. They offer many services like 3D printing, injection molding, assembly, custom PCBs and many other features you can explore on their website. Whether you're putting together a small simple project or working on something much more advanced, you can customize almost every part of it. You can choose the exact size, layout and shape you need and even decide on the details like the solder mask color and how the traces will look. Their website also has a big community where people share all kinds of cool projects. Many of these projects have a great retro feel and I often spend time browsing through them to find inspiration or just to admire the creativity. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below and now let's remove the capacitor.
I replaced the capacitor and the resistor and I actually tested the resistance. This was a 1500 ohms resistor and it was actually fine but just to be safe I replaced it anyway because it was around the corroded area and now since I'm already at it I also want to replace the battery so I'm going to replace it with this battery holder and a rechargeable cell. Okay, so I've reconnected everything and now let's see if it works. I really hope I fixed the issue. Well, that's a good sign. It works! So I guess the issue was just related to the potentiometer or the capacitor, I don't know, but Either way, it's working. It's reading the disk. I also want to try a game at this point. But... Well, the controller works. I've tested it before. But... This part over here, you can see that it's not working. And also, over here, there is some liquid that it was peeled. It looks like soda or coffee, something like that. It's working, but just to be safe, I want to open it to see if something's peeled inside. And also this part isn't working. So I really want to open it to have a closer look and also give everything a good clean. I cleaned everything up and honestly the inside wasn't even that dirty, just a few bags here and there. Luckily, whatever had spilled mostly stayed on the outside of the controller. I used some contact cleaner and took the chance to wash the Dreamcast case too. I put everything back together and thankfully the controller worked. The only issue is I could only find this one game to test the console with. I looked everywhere, but even for fighters that I used when I was young, seems to have disappeared. That's a shame because I really loved that game. But for now, this video ends here. Since everything is working fine, as always, I hope you liked this video. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you ever had a Dreamcast and of course your favorite game. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to my Patreon page and see ya in the next video. Bye!